Pablo Gunner here with MK Wizard, which is a mother, wife, amateur cook, and webcomic author. And we are always promoting you on our videos because we love your content. We love your comics. We love all the stuff that you post. It's so inspirational and wonderful. And we, we have you here because you offered your time to, to take the time because you were inspired from one of my videos because... You know, we have we have this great relationship. We have this great back and forth for through our Star Wars, through our YouTube. We've been talking through the Star Wars and then now with Captain America because there's a lot of people that they're just they're not reacting the right way. I mean, it, the reactions are okay. It's just the way they go about it. And so you are here to expand on that. So go ahead. Thank you, Papa Gunner. Well, MK Wizard here. And like Mr. Gunner says, I'm here to talk about or rather, it's actually a criticism on the criticisms people have been giving to a lot of new content. And it's honestly, it doesn't just extend to Star Wars, but all modern content these days. Because I firmly believe in two things. Number one, the quality of your reaction and your criticism matters just as much as the art you are criticizing. And number two, I believe that everything can be solved with good communication and the right attitude, and that includes modern writing. I find that the latest casualty being Star Wars The Acolyte was a particularly very unfair casualty, if not a victim, so to say, as much as a victim as a TV show can be. Because despite the fact that I myself didn't like the show and found it had a lot of flaws, I am not blind to its good points. And I believe that it should have been given a second season to pick up speed and become better. I want to focus on the three things it gets called out the most on and why when you stop and look at this, these are all very, really petty things to judge the Star Wars, the Acolyte on. In fact, a lot of modern lore, a lot of modern Star Wars uh, media and even Marvel media, DC media, a lot of it. The fact that it breaks lore. Well, I'd like to kindly remind everyone that Disney built its Magic Kingdom upon breaking lore. Starting with Snow White, the full-length animated feature, the whole Disney princess lineup, and basically, and even the Sword in the Stone and a lot of other lore out there, none of it is true to the source material, yet we love it. And I also want to remind everyone that it's not just Disney that's guilty of doing this, and I have proof. DC does it all the time. Look, look at all the different Batmans we see here just on TV, and even the different Supermans, and these are just the two I own. We also have like Man of Steel. Marvel does this, like... How many versions of this movie Spider-Man do we have alone? There are so many versions of Spider-Man, we I lost track of them, and they're just a Peter Parker. Like they break their own lore all the time. And you know what else breaks lore? Another beloved thing: Transformers. There's the Michael Bay, there's the animated movie, G1, and new ones are always coming out all the time. And so it, it transforms. I mean, I would say that its lore gets transforms almost as often as Prime does. <laughs> and you know what else tends to break its lore very often? Anime. There's a Sailor Moon manga, a Sailor Moon 90s anime, a modern Sailor Moon anime reboot, and even a live action series. None of them are the same. And Naoko Takuechi is perfectly cool with that. In fact, a lot of authors, a lot of creators of this media are perfectly fine with it and even encourage it. So the accolade being told that it breaks lore all the time, breaks so much lore and blatantly ignores what's canon, that's not very fair because that's not a flaw. That's an actual form of writing. And I can guarantee you a roast beef dinner that one day we're going to see an adaptation of The Lord of the Rings where Gollum overcomes his addiction and obsession with the ring and actually turns back towards the light. And I don't see how that's because in the original lore, a lot of people, especially people who connected with Gollum, who were addicts themselves, root for him and want him to overcome his addiction, even though canonically he does it. Anyway, that goes for the first point. The second point, the fact that the Acolyte had a lot of amateur mistakes and a lot of bad writing. I, like I told Mr. Gunner here, the, for a lot of the creators and actors and people behind the Acolyte, the reason they did all those newbie mistakes is because, well, they were newbies. This was their first ever piece of work. So unfortunately, we can't all be like George Lucas 
or James Cameron or all these other great names where their first uh, work struck gold. In fact, very often, you're probably going to strike your toe on the first time, especially if you have a lot riding on it. In fact, I'll give you an example just from myself because I believe in walking the walk. In fact, may I just share a uh, picture with you just to give you an example? Absolutely. On one side, hence the labels, is my first webcomic. Look at how sketchy my style used to be. And this is my current webcomic, my fourth webcomic, The Night and Day Difference. I'm looking at it, and if I was not the author of my Myself, I wouldn't even be sure if I would believe this was made by the same person. But that just is a there you go moment. Okay. A person who does something for the first time very likely is going to have uh, make the most mistakes. And that's okay. Right. It's even okay if it's terrible, your first work. Hence, Master Yoda's very famous line, failure is the best teacher. You know what? In fact, even people who are professionals make mistakes. George Lucas, when he was at the height of his career with Star Wars, even in his time when he was on top, of it he made flops too like i remember the star wars uh cartoon it was not good and i don't uh i don't know if anyone remembers this or purposely chooses not to but they did like a christmas special uh back in the day in the timeline of star wars where uh chewbacca wanted to go back to his hometown to celebrate a holiday that was something like christmas that was a movie that george wants to forget <laughs> But the point is, is that you have to forgive people when they make mistakes. And even though I myself can get very blunt with my criticisms that this is not good at all and this was really bad, I judge the art, not the artist. Like they said in Daria, you cannot sue, persecute, jail, or even ground somebody for making a work of art you don't like. So don't be hard on the artists. That's, uh, that's, that's cruel. It's mean-spirited. In fact, I would say that's one of the biggest problems. Which brings me to the final point. This is someone that it's one that's very serious to me because I myself am not blind to it. In fact, I agree with it. The fact that a lot of modern writers these days write with a lot of resentment, hatred, and even spite towards the original content or certain parties. Well, first of all, I believe a lot of writers do do that. First of all, a lot of them have confessed to that, like the makers of She-Hole. But even then, you still have to react in a way that you're the bigger person. And the best example of this is, ironically, Luke Skywalker himself. He ascended to becoming a Jedi Master and became the hero he was by both acknowledging that uh, his father had fallen to the dark side and accepting that they, v Vader was his father and did terrible things, and this is all a part of his own legacy, but also accepting that he needs all the anger that comes with it. And also even understanding things from his point of view. And that brings me to even the point of the fact that the most common retort people, or at least give me when it comes to uh, being civil to those who are spitefully writing, is, well, look at how privileged they are. They speak of uh, being so privileged in every, of overprivileged parties and everything and having it so good when they have it so good themselves. Well, my only counter argument to this is this. How do you know that? If you didn't know Anakin Skywalker and saw him like this, you would probably think that he has it all too. You would think that he's handsome, he's a Jedi master, he's respected, he's a renowned hero. This guy never knew what it was like to go to bed hungry, alone, or scared or anything. But we all know that's not the reality of Anakin's life. I mean, the kid literally was born a slave and he had to leave his mother to go do better for himself and didn't see her again until his adult life. And even when he finally did, it was only just as soon as he finally did meet her again, she literally died in his arms. This is not a guy who doesn't understand suffering. And that's what made him so vulnerable to falling to the dark side. With that said, you don't know what caused Kathleen uh, Cam Kennedy, uh, side where they feel the need to incorporate spite into their writing. Maybe they didn't know what it was like to go to bed hungry, but that doesn't mean they don't know what it's like to go to bed with your parents in the background fighting like cats and dogs, for instance, or having to go home feeling afraid for your own life, for, the, for your own spouse harming you, or going to bed praying every second of your life that somebody you love is going to finally uh, be out of the hospital and well again. It is naive to think that just because somebody is privileged in one way, they are not they are not privileged in other ways. And I also have this to remind people about like uh, being just being LGBT. It's only recent that we've come to be very accepting of this. 
not too long ago, like just when I was in my 20s, it was still, people were still in the process of accepting it. And although it's easy to say, well, now the world is so open-minded, we're so accepting and everything, the scars don't go away. And it's the same thing with Anakin, aka Darth Vader. His scars of his suffering never went away. His drama was never addressed. So he fell into the dark side, which goes back to my point of handling it the way Luke did. Luke acknowledged that his father had done terrible things, but had terrible things done to him that he did not deserve to begin with. And he acknowledged that by default, his father was a good man in the beginning and believed that he could re-become that good man. Hence his, uh, why when he saw his father again in the big showdown on uh, Vader, Yes, he did not enable him to be evil. He did not encourage his evil ways. He did not join him in his evil ways. And he fought to defend his friends and everything. He also showed Vader mercy, reason, care, genuine. And that is that despite Vader having been evil for years, decades, he came back to the light. Hence, Luke Skywalker's most famous quote of all, I am a Jedi like my father before me. He wasn't just talking about himself. He was talking about Vader too. And not just what the Jedi he used to be, but the Jedi he still was deep down and could be again. Hence why in the framing of that scene, if you really take a good look at it, Luke isn't just standing up to Palpatine. He's standing in between Palpatine and Vader in a way that he looks like he's actually protecting Vader. In closing, that's my statement. We should all be aim to be Jedis, like our forefather George Lucas before us, who tried to show us that being a hero is not all you play because it's the one given to you by default by the story, but you actually try to live up to it. And that includes in how we react to art. Don't vilify artists. Mind your words. And instead of saying, this sucks, I hate this guy, I, oh no, this person is on the team again, try to give actual constructive criticism, suggestions, ideas, and above all else, encouragement. Because at the end of the day, artists are people. I know because I am an artist. And as you can see, I'm a person like you. So that's my statement. And I hope I enlightened you. Thank you very much. Talk Nerdy to Me crew. It's been an honor. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you a lot. Thank you very much. And we'll have everyone check you out on Instagram and everywhere else. Thank you so much, Papa Gunner. And I guess the best way to close this is, may the force be with you. <laughs> Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to you too.